So, we found the Taco Bell <laughs> in Spain. <laughs> And I foresaw them giving huge portions. I guess Chris didn't, because he got two of these giant things. They're a lot bigger than in the U.S., huh? Actually, they're, they're a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I got beer with mine, because that was an option. So why not? Getting beer with Taco Bell. It's like, it skips the middleman. have to wonder what in the world this thing is. It's just so massive. Huh. It's pigeon overload, man. Look at these little things. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I wonder if that one's going to come back. Hey, hey. <laughs> no, wait, there's one in her hand. There's one eating out of her hand. Look, look. Check it out. <laughs> there's a lot of pigeons. Look at them. Oh, wow. <laughs> they came right in front of her face. <laughs> Yes, part the seas. Do you think they have anxiety, the pigeons? I think they're probably used to it by now. <laughs> so supposedly all this used to be the wall that divided the parts of the city from the old and the new. Bishop, like all bishops of Barcelona, have been in here or have done their thing here. And uh, it's been that way. They've always been here since 343. So, quite some time. And this place is spectacular. It's another one of those places where I can't figure out how to begin explaining how big it is. It just feels huge. Wow. We stumbled upon the roof. I didn't even know we could go up here. Go along. <laughs> Chris saw a sign that said no school children allowed. And that that enticed us to look further into it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yes. King, <laughs> I guess was the Belgian the the Belgium FN control style. Focus. Yeah, the Belgium FN controls is what it stuck with. But until then, you had these crazy, these crazy little shifting designs. And then virtually nothing down here. These are just foot pegs. We're in the, the Moto Museum here. I'm very, very excited. Needless to say. That, whoa, that's a suspension piece for the, for this, it, Chris, it'd move like this, it'd move in this manner. So, no suspension on the back, only suspension for the seat. Wow. And it's apparent to see, like, just how small the, and this is the combustion chamber, and then it just spin it down here into the gear system. And the the uh, transmission, and then throw it into here, the actual powertrain transfer, and send it along. And then the, the standardized Nimbus that 
really, I guess, created a standard for reliability. Um, it says here that the Nimbus was so reliable and so good amongst the motorcycle world at the time that J.K. Rowling actually used it as the inspiration for um, Harry Potter's broom, the Nimbus 2000. something new every day. So this is called the Corgi. It could be fitted in segments. It didn't have a starting mechanism and no one had to be pushed to get started. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a it's like an old it's like an old manual truck. You you park it on a hill and then just, <laughs> just bump start it. It's hysterical. It's called the Corgi. I have a corgi, and I can attest that it certainly looks like a corgi. <laughs> Hysterical. So this was made for the Normandy landings. So you didn't even have to like... You could just put it together in seconds and then just roll it and start going. <laughs> I don't think, it, I don't think it, they actually did it though. No, it wasn't actually used, but... I mean, it was in the plan. But the thing totally looks like a corgi. <laughs> like if there was if there was a scooter that was gonna resemble that, or like any vehicle that was gonna resemble that dog, that one would be it. 